Olá, seja muito bem-vindo, esse é o Boteco em Filme, eu nome é Sérgio Siverly, e hoje nós vamos ter a segunda parte do papo com o Mark Sutton. Se você não viu a primeira ainda, você não sabe o que você tá perdendo, clica aqui no card, ó, que tá aparecendo aqui nesse ladinho para você assistir, caso você esteja no celular ou no computador, na TV ainda o card não funciona, né? Ó, e o vídeo tá legendado, tá? Eu quero mandar um abração para a Lemenini, que conseguiu legendar o vídeo para a gente não perder absolutamente nada. E é aquela questão, acho que se a gente se limitar só a conversar com gente da nossa língua, a gente vai acabar se fechando, né? Então é bacana ter essas pessoas de fora para conversar com a gente. E o Sutton é um dos maiores fotógrafos da história da Fórmula 1, cheio de momentos incríveis para contar para a gente. Então, a gente começa a ver isso agora. Nesse começo, ele vai contar sobre algumas técnicas de fotografias e também da vez que ele tirou uma foto que marcou os jornais e a mídia em 2009, que foi o título do Jenson Button, que corria na época pela Brown, né? se tornou campeão mundial naquele ano, e a história de como ele conseguiu tirar essa foto, inclusive com a ajuda de um fotógrafo brasileiro, é sensacional. Olha aí! One of my other famous pictures is, 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 is again, it's a moment, but it's, it's got a great story. And it's, it's when uh, Jensen Button won the World Championship in, in 2009, actually in your home country, in Brazil. So there you go. So it's got a good connection. So it mm. basically, um, I, dro I dropped my wide-angle lens. So I had this wide-angle lens that was like, say, like that. It's a 24 mil to, 20, to 70. And I dropped it on the floor. I, I damaged it beyond belief. Oh, and my I God. <laughs> and I, and I, And I was very lucky that I knew a Brazilian photographer called Beto. And uh, Beto had luckily lent me one of his lenses. And it was a 10 millimeter, so it was much wider lens. And uh, I, I thanked him so much. It, it wasn't uh, as it was that I was shooting Canon in those days. It wasn't a Canon lens, but it was still great to have it. And I was very grateful to him for having it. And then basically, uh, obviously, Jensen clinched the championship. We were over where his car was in Park Ferme celebrating. He hugged his trainer. And uh, he ran then to Park Ferme. He didn't win the race, obviously. So it was it was a bit weird not shooting the podium and just shooting Jensen, the champion. But obviously, being a British photographer and British, obviously, guy, the, the, the main thing that everybody wanted was the pictures of Jensen winning the championship. So it was really all about Jensen, really, and not even the podium. So we, we came to Park Ferme, he had his helmet on, so we couldn't really see his face or his eyes. So we were just shouting and screaming at him. Get your helmet off, Jensen. We need to see you. And eventually, he took his helmet off, and then he came over to me. I mean, literally, was to see me at the corner of his eye because I was shouting the loudest. And he just goes like that, right in front of my lens, and goes like that. And your his eyes are just crazy. And I'm thinking, oh, these are a great set of pictures. And I'm thinking, I'm actually quite. I've got him all in because it's a wide lens. I've got him in. If I'd have been on the normal lens, you wouldn't have seen his arm. You wouldn't have seen his fingers because it would have been cropped. So I'm, I'm I'm thanking Beto again because I wouldn't have got those pictures. So in my mind, I'm thanking Beto. So in the meantime, I then download, go back to my, um, I've got a technician there who downloads my cards and sends these pictures off back to the UK and they get, I, I don't know what's going to get used. So after that night, we celebrate, we have a great party and then we fly about, I think about about one o'clock in the morning, we fly back to England from Brazil and we're there with the, with the Getty Images guys with all the agencies from England. And we, we go immediately, because obviously we've got a British world champion, there's going to be lots of pictures published in, in the newspapers. And I literally, we go to the news agents there at the airport and we go into the uh, news agents and open all the newspapers. And, and the Getty guys are going, that's not mine, that's not mine. I'm, and I'm going, yeah, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. And I actually got about seven national newspapers in England. And there's, the, you've got the photo with me with all the newspapers there. Um, all the famous newspapers in England used it on the front and the back cover. I got the front cover of Autosport uh, magazine, which I now work for. And, yeah, it was just an amazing opportunity to be there with Jensen, to work with him when he was in Formula Ford and Formula 3, uh, to sponsor him, and then for him to acknowledge me, you know, in, in between all these photographers and just come directly to me. If you see the pictures, you'll see it's the, it's the contact. It's, it's sometimes the relationship with the driver as well that really helps. Having a little bit of knowledge of also knowing that driver or just having a bit of a relationship and having a bit of contact with him, him knowing who you are, you know, that's very important in our job as well. And having respect, if they respect you, you know, he said to me at the next race, actually, when I, I went to get the Autosport 
front cover signed. And he went to me, he said, why do my eyes look so crazy? I said, well, <laughs> Jensen, you just won the world championship. I said, it was the same. When you won your first Grand Prix in Budapest in 2006, yeah, and his, eye, his eyes were crazy then. He's, there's this picture of him in Park Ferme, and he's, he's put his hands out like that. But you can see his eyes like crazy like this. Mm-hmm. And he was exactly the same. I said, Jensen, look at that one. Look at this one. You were the same, mate. Don't worry about it. It's about, I just look a bit crazy. He said, but you were crazy. You won the world championship. You're a world yeah. champion. You know, and it, it hadn't sunk in, I don't think, into his mind. But you, you've just got to celebrate the moments. It doesn't matter what you look like or what, what you did. You know, it's it's about those moments. And it's for us, it's that it's us capturing those moments. You know, it's like capturing those very, very individual or special moments that, that create and, and, and makes us a good photographer, you know, and, and makes us stand out above a lot of other people. So, yeah, that's it was a great moment for me, for sure. 2009, Brazil. São Paulo and uh, winning the World Championship. Nessa parte agora o Santo vai contar pra gente questões mais técnicas. Então se você é um aspirante a fotógrafo, tá começando a sua carreira ou mesmo já tá há algum tempo andando pela sua estrada dentro da fotografia, é muito bacana acompanhar essa parte do papo, porque a gente já falou, o Santo tem uma experiência incrível nesse mundo. Então, é um aprendizado que eu tenho certeza que vai fazer a diferença na sua carreira. Obviously also we took that on film. That was a very just to give you an idea of we were shooting on film that was very low ISO. So you couldn't shoot very fast shutter speeds and those pictures when I look back they were very very dark. <laughs> and oh actually, my god. Obviously, obviously now with Photoshop and with all the with all the computerization you can actually make the pictures so much better even with you know scanning that original slide and then obviously making the, the image better from a raw file and making the quality brighter and more vibrant, you know. So actually the technology has helped my my business as well. You know, it's helped our photography. The cameras have improved so much, but now everything is digital. You know, obviously everything's moved from from film to digital. So. What was common to lose uh, films and, and pictures because of that manual, you know, technology, let's say. Yeah, I know. Very basic. Very basic. I mean, we were like we were like processing in chemicals, you know, it was it was all very, very, very manual. Everything, you know, you had a little tank to process the films in black and white. And then eventually we went on to have more machinery as we go as we, as the company grew bigger. But in those early days it was all like we had a dish with all the chemicals in it. You'd see the prints come up. You know, it was very, very basic and you you were learning so much about how how everything worked, you know, and then obviously we went more to color. So in the early days we were black and white, and then we went more to color because people wanted color pictures, you know. But in the early days it was more black and white. But mm-hmm. as as the years progressed, we got color. Then we got more machinery. We had this processing lab almost in our offices in in Toaster near Silverstone. So things progressed so very quickly, and then eventually digital started to come in, but the quality was never good enough. So we had both. So we were shooting film, and then he was shooting digital on different cameras. So the digital pictures went back and they were good for the newspaper and for the early part of the web, but you couldn't publish in a magazine. The quality wasn't good enough. But as the cameras got better and better, um, you can then move from film eventually to totally digital. And then you process, you came back to your computer and then sent the pictures, but but now everything's sent from the camera. So now we, we, tr- we transmit it from a transmitter on the side of the camera, is connected to either a phone or a, a MiFi device on 4G, and it will be 5G very soon, and then it's sent automatically. So you pick the picture, send, pick, send. Then eventually the next step will be that every picture is sent, then you have an editor somewhere in the world have a, looking at the pictures and choosing them. So technology, you can see it coming even better for the future, and uh, I've obviously moved with it all. I've, I've seen everything, you know, from, from doing everything manual now to completely automatic. So it's been an amazing step through my career, really, to see everything change, but... But I've I've really enjoyed it to be honest. Talking about that, what is the next step you think in this career? You know, with uh, right now we have uh, phones with an amazing cameras. You know, mm. yeah, yeah. But do you, do you think the photographer can be replaced to to well, something shoot. more yeah, automatic? I mean, well, I mean, obviously the the, the camera. <laughs> The, the problem with the camera is you need the long lens. So the, a lot of the circuits we go to, you're a long distance away from the cars. The problem with the mobile phone is that the camera is great for, say, wide-angle lenses and a small telephoto. But the problem is that these cam- these phone cameras will never have 
the zoom or the telephoto capability to take to take a picture really close. And that is the problem. So as soon as you start zooming, the quality goes, they become pixelated. The reason we have very expensive lenses is because the quality is always there. You know, the camera body is, say, $5,000. The lenses can be from ten dollars to $15,000 each. So the reason that we spend that money is we want to get close to the car. We want the quality. We want the speed. You know, the cam- my camera at the moment, the D6, uh, the Nikon D6 shoots 14 frames per second. So it shoots 14 frames in one second. It, it's, you can never get that from the mobile phone. Um, and obviously, we're, we're very, very soon coming to mirrorless cameras. So the next step in our in our in our technology is mirrorless. And mirrorless, you can go to twenty frames, thirty frames per second, and you're going to get the quality. So Nikon are actually producing a professional um, a mirrorless camera that will come out later this year for the Olympics, and that will be the first step into this new technology. But um, certainly, at the moment, I'm going to stick with my cameras. It's also about using the wide-angle lenses. You know, you can use these wide-angle lenses on these cameras. They're amazing. This, obviously, the new iPhone 12 uh, Pro Max I've got here has got an incredible wide-angle lens, which I've never seen before. It's got three three lenses that combine into one, um, and gives you that very wide-angle lens, which I do use a lot. I have a 14 millimeter wide-angle, which I use quite a lot. And then obviously they range up to 400 millimeters. So you've got, I've got a range of lenses. I have to change them. And obviously a phone is all built in. So I think that's the difference really. But obviously that I'm paying a lot of money for those lenses as well. And the, it's more about the quality more than anything. But also yeah. using the, you have to use the light. You have to use the shutter speed. Yeah. You have to use the exposure. So there's lots of things to think about. And it's also using your expertise, your expertise of how to take a picture, you know. That was the thing I was about to ask you, because do, do you have a favorite way to photograph a car? We're always looking for artistic angles, artistic pictures. Obviously, sometimes when the rain, when it rains and then the sun comes out is an incredible picture because you have the spray, you have the backlight, you have a golden light. So, I mean, I've taken some pictures. I mean, a, a great example is when I've got, there's a picture of the McLaren wings, I think, in, in Hungary, um, when they were all lined up. And again, it's 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 shooting a, a particular light. So most people maybe will have gone home, but I always want to stay as late as possible, whether it's to get the drivers or to get that really late golden light. And it's normally about five or six o'clock in, in the early part of the year, then goes a little bit later, obviously, as the season progresses. But it's always trying to get those different types of opportunities, the light, the backlight or the the poor even even the portrait of the driver you, you can sometimes have a yeah. like a halo on the t- on the back of the driver's head where you're shooting backlight i remember shooting a, a couple of years ago in in paul rickard when the drivers went to the driver's briefing again it was about six o'clock in the evening and but all the drivers were walking towards me i just stayed where the where the driver's briefing room was and the drivers just walked towards me and they all have this back lovely golden black backlight like you said and it's lit the hair so you can it's got this like a key line around the hand. It's the sort of beautiful pictures that you want. And there was one particular moment in, I guess, in, in my career where there was a, a really famous picture where you're always looking for the light. This was in Montreal. I was shooting from above, shooting down onto the podium, which is a very rare occasion. You get to go to a very new angle or a different angle. And um, I was shot the podium, and then all of a sudden I saw Lewis leaving the podium. And as he was leaving the podium, he just lifted the trophy into the air and as he lifted it into the air, it, the sunlight hit the trophy. And I call it the golden moment. And all it, it was a maple leaf on the trophy. So all it's lit is this maple leaf. He's sort of quite shadowed, but the light on the trophy is this golden light. And I call it a golden moment because, again, it was a rare one millisecond. It's only one frame out of 14 frames I've been walking off where it's lit the trophy. And that picture then was used on Instagram. It was used on F1.com. And I managed to get Lewis to sign a load of those for charity, which was a great opportunity. Uh, but I, I call it my golden moment. So those, those sort of rare, Roman, rare moments that happen in your life, that's probably one of them. Again, being in a very special position, having the right exposure, and just capturing something that nobody else has got. That's also something very special. To finish our conversation, let's talk about you a little bit. Uh, tell me your favorite car ever to take Ooh. a photograph. <laughs> Photograph. I don't. I don't yeah. know. I mean. I mean. Obviously, my fa- my most famous picture is probably the flying fin. In terms in terms of my my famous picture, it's where Mika Hakkinen went over the curb and went into the air. Um, it's in Adelaide in 1993. It's only my second year in Formula One, and um, 
I was there with about 10 other photographers and I, I just hear a screech of the brakes and I looked up and literally the car quickly went over the curb and landed and went back. I mean, it's literally a microsecond this, this happened. And I just kept my finger on the button and followed it through. And I had a 300 millimeter lens on, so I couldn't change the, the focal length. I couldn't zoom back or anything. I literally just kept the focus the same. I kept the, the, the focal length the same. And um, I didn't really know what had happened, whether I got it or not. I, I had no idea. We all looked at each other and said, did anybody get it? And we all sort of said no, really, because we weren't sure. Then overnight, the film got processed. So we, this was in Adelaide. They processed overnight in a local lab. And then the films came back the next day. And then we were looking on the light box, you know, looking with a little eyeglass on the light box. And my brother shouted out or screamed out, wow, <laughs> look at this picture, you know, this incredible picture. <laughs> then all the photographers sort of came over and looked at, looked at the light box and looked at the photo. Wow, wow, amazing. So then we cut the, cut the, fr the frame out and gave it to the lab and said, can we have 50 duplicates of this original? And can we have three prints? So big, three big 20 by 16 prints. And they came back within like a couple of hours. So that my, my idea was then to go and show Mika Hakkinen because I, I, I'd grown up with Mika from Formula Renault, um, Formula, Formula 3 in England. He became champion. And then obviously he went to Lotus and we worked for Lotus and obviously eventually went to McLaren. But um, this was um, my, my chance to go and show him one of my, my, one of my famous pictures. And he, he, he had no idea that what he'd done, because obviously when you're in the car, you, you just think you've had a little jump over the curb. And obviously my picture shows it because I'm quite low down. It shows it really high up in the air. And um, the TV didn't get it either. So and no other photographer got it. So it was one of those moments where uh, you capture something that's just one of those magical moments. And the engineer said we had a little blip on the telemetry. Uh, where we had no engine power, and we wondered what it what, what it was, and uh, that that's the reason why. So after that 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 picture then became Mika Hakkinen signed one to me personally, um, and says um, Mika Hakkinen the flying fin, and that's what he became. <laughs> he became the fly known as the flying fin because of my photos. So yeah, it's it's an amazing photo, and it's a one in a million picture, but just one of many I've taken. You know, but it is about be like you said before, being in the right place at the right time having the right lens, the right exposure, shutter speed. It's about everything. If everything works and it, it, it happens, it's just great to be there and to experience it. And I just love those moments that happen in your career. Thanks very much, everybody, for watching this amazing show. Please follow me on Instagram, at F1 Sutton. And you can follow my story, my history, and all my travel around the world in Formula One. Amazing, Mark. Thank you so much. Eu no vou problem. deixar, como sempre, os links aqui na descrição do vídeo, tá bom? Se você gostou desse vídeo, não esquece de deixar o like e muito obrigado pela sua paciência e pela sua audiência, como sempre. Até o próximo vídeo. Obrigado! <risos>